was and give him the praise for what he's done. Amen. of her life, but we want to pray for a miracle for Sister May. And God will give her a miracle. <clears throat> she suffered so much. She's been through so much. Her husband shot down before her eyes, falling in the grass before her eyes, breathing his last breath. You, you wives, think of how you would feel. And uh, you young people, you can sense what I'm saying. Um, she went through that. And through that moment of death, the Lord had uh, Tracy and Brother Matthew near there. I don't know just where you were, Matthew, but you were close by there, wasn't you? And uh, Tracy lived not for her, Tracy Stewart. But through that contact of them being there at the moment of that tragedy, we, we uh, Sister May found her way to the church. And she supported the church so much the last five years, six years of her life. They shot her husband, but they might as well have shot her. Yes. Because her life ended that day. Um, and that shows you how brief life can be. Her husband had taken her out to a Valentine dinner. And from the happy Valentine dinner table, they came home. And two men robbing their house came out. And he got out of the truck yes. and made the mistake of trying to get a hunting knife that he had to throw at the one. And he just raised the gun that they had stolen, his own gun. Yes. And he just raised that gun and took his life. <coughs> and she went through that. But if it had not been for this church, she would have probably taken her own life a few years ago, but God let her come here and find life Amen. and strength and help. And now she needs, she needs the Lord to help her because uh, she's in a place where God needs to give us a miracle for her. And so how many will pray, pray, earnestly pray, not just tonight, but here go home tonight. Before you go to bed tonight, we'll pray for Sister May Ramsey. And loves the church, loves the Lord. And uh, really, really, this miracle of God will take place. 
So I wanted to bring that before the church and uh, pray for Brother Leslie Liebman. He will be going to surgery a week from tomorrow, and a week from Thursday. And God's going to go with him, Praise and Jenny, God. and just like he did Dean, and I, I have full confidence the Lord is going to uh, be with him and go, go with him through that time. And we'll all be standing in prayer with him, just like we have the others. And Brother Dean Harris, what a miracle, what a testimony he gave. And uh, yes, I was there when that doctor was touched of the Lord. In fact, I had my hand on his hand. And uh, he couldn't help but feel a higher power than himself. And God went with him in that surgical procedure. So we're going to we're going to pray. We're going to pray for our companions. We're going to pray for our families. We're going to pray for our uh, young people. And I'm glad to, every Wednesday night, I'm glad to see you young people here. And my prayer is that you'll um, you'll go through transitions and changes, but uh, you'll uh, you'll go beyond just the youth service. Because now some of you are not going to be youth in days to come. You're going to mature, you're going to change. You're going to grow up, you're going to be an adult world. And I hope that uh, you'll take what you're getting on these Wednesday nights and then be here Saturday night or Sunday when you're not working and you can come and uh, get what you get on Saturday night, Sunday, Sunday night. And let the Holy Ghost lead and guide you and change you. And recognize your youth of the body of Christ. Your youth of the body of Christ. Your young people of the family of God. And I know you appreciate Brother Matthew standing in the gap, Sister Jenny, and Melina, and the others have been going out several and all the ones been going out, but uh, several are going out during the youth meeting. But I um, appreciate them standing in the gap while Brother D and Sister Sherry hasn't been able to be here. But thank God, thank God they're back. They're here. Yeah. They're, they're going to be getting away from this confinement. Back in action again. So my prayer is that, that you'll. Um, I'm not going to say anything. I have a line of thought I'd like to give you. But it's too late now in the evening for that. But I'd like to talk to you young people as a pastor. Uh, not to scold you, not to belittle you, harass you, but to give you strength to take the next step as you're growing up, as you're mature. I think, what would I have done, young people, say this and stop because I'll get in line of thought if I don't. If I had not been able to go from my youth and had the Holy Ghost and the Word of God and it settled in me, it got my mind, and when I hit my 20s, well, I was pastoring a church when I was 17. Old in tent meetings when I was 14 crowds up to 3,000 people when I was 14 years old. Uh, when I was 17, I pastored the church. When I was 20, I pastored another church. When I was 21, I pastored another church. And when I was 22 or 23, I pastored another church. Because the Word of God went down in my soul, in my heart, in my spirit. That's why you go out with Brother Matthew. That's why you go out with these teachers and structures. And uh, you're facing a dark world, a gainsay world. And I hope you'll, you'll really get a hold of God. Sister Cindy, I was proud to see Brother uh, Cameron here Sunday night. And he wasn't just here. He came to the altar. Is there money really, really received a touch from the Lord. And then Monday night, 
He was sure in Bible study with his Bible. That did me so much good. Because Cameron has went through some of your age, and now he's in the upper middle 20s, isn't he? And, and now he's going on in life. You need what you have tonight, young people. And I think the adults will agree with me here. How many will agree you don't only need to remember the Lord in your youth, you need to carry him with you throughout your life. Throughout your life. Praise the Lord. So it's been good to be. We just enjoyed. I appreciate the message from the Rose gave. The word of God and the labor. And I appreciated Brother Dean's testimony. And it just filled my heart. Now, I've got a job to do. Got to receive the offering. And of course, it'll be about $10,000 tonight. Am I not a man of faith? I'm a man of tremendous faith. I mean, talk about faith. You heard me say 10,000, didn't you? That's tremendous faith. Praise God. But uh, I've got another thing to do. Sister, uh, Brother Joe Knight passed away and went to be with the Lord. And uh, the arrangements were made today. I'd like to see as many as could be here, possible to be here. Saturday, the service will be, the viewing will be at 10 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Saturday, for Brother Joe Knight. He's with the Lord. Precious man, but only with us, what, a year, year and a half? Two years, something like that. But uh, they, they're wonderful people. And uh, Sister Maddie, and I appreciate the one that stayed all night with her last night until the kids got in. Our church has really been over there showing itself strong, caring for Sister Maddie. I appreciate the food chain. I don't know who's taking it over tomorrow, but I know today, I think it was Brother Wallace, Mr. Wallace that took over a great big dinner for them at the House of the Night. And uh, it was... I don't know who's handling that food chain, but uh, who's doing that? All right. Uh, but uh, I really appreciate you that are contributing to that food chain because it blessed that family over there tonight. And so the service will be now. That means, that means. Pardon me? The service is at 11 o'clock Saturday. The viewing is at 10, from 10 to 11. The service will be at 11. Now that means this. We're going to make them Friday. And Brother Wilkes must be anticipating the whole church up there. He went out and rented a large church building. I mean, it is large. He must be anticipating. So we're going to load the vans up, 945, and both vans should be full. And there's some private cars going. Um, and uh, I want to see those two vans full. We've got a third van if we need to. We want to go up to Macon and establish the church. Help our brother up there. And uh, some of the Chattanooga saints are coming down from Chattanooga. And that's about 80 miles. And so we're going to have two assemblies linking up together up there. And uh, that's what we're to do. We're to build the body of Christ. Build the church of the living God. They want to pray uh, for God's people everywhere that God will be with them. But we need to load those vans up. We need to go to Bacon now. You say, Brother Marlowe, it's a long trip. It's hard. Ask me and I'll tell you. <laughs> Sister Marlowe and I have to go up and come back. That's, we'll be on the road about 14 hours yeah. Friday. And we'll 
be getting back in here at daybreak, probably somewhere around that time, because we have the funeral Saturday. And we're going to take care of our brother here Saturday and take care of the family. And God's going to give us strength to go up, preach, preach, and be back here Saturday to take care of the services. Say, Brother Marlowe, you think you can do that? I'll, I'll quote the scripture. I can do all things. I didn't hear anybody. You preached it. I can do all things. Through Christ. Which strengthens me. Praise the name of the Lord. You young people are not just the only ones who've got some vim and vigor about that. I've got as much as you've got. I can outrun some of you. <laughs> <laughs> two year old ones. I'm going to try it, but it's at the place. <laughs> Time to get in there by seven o'clock and uh, be with Brother Wilkes and the Macon Saints. And it's gonna, we're going to be it come daybreak Saturday morning, but we're going to, by the grace of God, do it. Praise God. And uh, you that have to go and stay all night, then uh, stay all night, get, get a motel room. There's, we've got a motel we can recommend you near the church there. And um, sleep uh, and get up and come back Saturday, get back in here for the weekend. Because uh, some of you can't, med you have medical issues, and some of you I know have to get some rest that night. So I recommend you do that. And I wouldn't recommend anybody to go on that trip that isn't able physically, I don't want to put anybody sick in bed. Uh, but uh, we do need to load up uh, those two vans, and if necessary, we'll get another to go. So after uh, you, you pray about it, I started to say make a list out, but really, just show up. <laughs> you know, uh, you can make a list out and have not show up, but just show up. <laughs> just be here, and uh, you know, to, to go. We're going to receive our offering now. How many have enjoyed the worship tonight? The, worship, the word of God, the testimonies, and the praise. And uh, But I'm not going to let you out of that chair because we've got some good folks coming to church right now that love to praise the Lord. And this church is growing by praise. And we were, we, we've been growing in praise. Like Brother Dale got up there. He didn't let us go without giving up. Uh, round of praise. praise. What, did you, what did you say you were? You're a gap filler. <laughs> Not what you said you were, brother Dave. A gap filler. I think you said you're a gap filler. And I like that. You fill the gap. Praise our God. God brought you here. God brought you to this church. So we're going to pray. Let's pray before we do anything else. <laughs> 